This clip is brought to you by VegasWinners.com. Get expert sports betting advice from some of the best handicappers in the world. Head on over to VegasWinners.com and win yourself some money. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. That's a great compliment. <laughs> well, Joe, we've had a lot of fun talking about, you know, Kurt's jump to TNA 15 years ago. Where does the time go? And man, you were the top dog in TNA at the time coming off that incredible run with ring of honor. And then you had the undefeated streak going with, with TNA. You'd had all those legendary matches, you know, that people read about in the newsletters with Kobashi and punk and, and now Kurt had the reputation of being the best wrestler in the world. Were you as excited for that as we were as fans? Uh, you know, I, I will say this. I remember when, you know, you first start hearing the rumblings of it and stuff and, uh, um, which usually we, we you know, all, all the boys were in the know kind of heard early. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think we all were excited, you know, um, especially at the time for, for the company, you know, it was this big transitional time, new network, you know, and, you know, new exciting time slot and, uh, to have a guy, the caliber of Kurt come over, um, you know, we all knew it was going to be a big deal and it was going to, you know, be an awesome thing for us. And it was. Thanks for the compliment, Joe. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, I'll, I'll try to limit them as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> hey, Joe, I know that walking into TNA, you were the big dog with a long undefeated streak, but you never held the world title. You were in the ring when I made my debut in the impact zone. What was running through your head? Um, it just excited, you know, it was, it was a really cool, neat moment. And, uh, I, you know, I think everybody was just really at the time, especially at that time was just like, there was just anticipation, you know, uh, I was excited about what we, what we were kind of, you know, what we had kind of planned out. And, uh, you know, I knew, I, I knew it was going to resonate and it was going to be cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, it was, it, it was, it was, it was a real fun moment. You know what I mean? It's one of those fun kind of moments in your career where you're just like, Oh, this is going to be, this is going to be pretty cool when you know, it's cool going in, uh, it's always a good time. You know, it's, it's a rarity that you have that, you know, where you just know it's going to go, it's going to go awesome. And uh, that, that was one of those few times where I was just like, yeah, it's going to be one of those cool moments. It's going to be great. You had a lot of momentum, Joe, the undefeated streak, uh, you know, me coming in, it was the two of the biggest names in TNA that were going to go at it. Yeah. And um, you know, a lot of momentum at the time, but at, at the time too, you know, I think there was, a case we made that, you know, we're trying to define ourselves, identify ourselves, get, get, get some traction on, on, on a bigger stage. And, um, you know, I, I think that's really why a lot of us, I, I know like myself, AJ, you know, um, Daniels, you know, guys, I mean, pretty much everybody was just kind of like, you know, having Kurt here w w is going to be a great thing because, you know, finally, you know, we're going to get some, 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 some traction, you know, on, on a more mainstream basis. We're going to be working with this guy, you know, he has, brings a tremendous fan base with them, uh, you know, tremendous pedigree with them. And, uh, you know, we all knew we could go, you know, we just needed, we just needed that linchpin to, to show everybody that we could. And, uh, you know, a lot of us kind of looked at you like that, you know, just a big old golden goose. Not, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, for the most part, like, you know, and, but I mean, really when you're a young guy coming up and, um, and, and you're seeing guys who are accomplished and, you know, you, you, that's, that's how you, you view those people. You know, you view them as like, that's, that's my opportunity to uh, go out there and, and show people what I'm capable of. And, um, you know, I think that very much was the vibe for a lot of the guys when you came over. Joe, were you surprised that you were the first opponent picked? I mean, TNA had a pretty loaded roster. And at the time, since you did have the undefeated streak, Kurt and I have sort of freestyled here on the show that maybe it would have made a little more sense to build up to you and let you continue your streak. Maybe Kurt start his own or something like that. Were you surprised that you I mean, were the first everything's right awesome in hindsight, uh, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I, 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 I wasn't surprised, uh, at all. Um, just because, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I knew the temperament of Dixie. I knew the temperament of the guys at the top and, and, and what they really wanted to do and what they were really trying to splash out there and push out there. So I, I had a pretty good inkling that we were going to go straight to me, you know, at the time. And, um, I mean, I, I would tend to agree, you know, everything can always be better with a little bit of build and obviously giving me and Kurt a little bit of time to actually um, make that into the feud that I think we wanted to, you know, especially in our initial discussions when he first came, you know, me and Kurt sat down a few times and just, you know, shot the bull back and forth and just, and talked about, you know, potential things in the future. And I knew when we talked about us, you know, we definitely wanted more time to lead into it. We definitely wanted more time to, to build it. I know Kurt, you know, wanted to um, get in there and work with a few other guys before he got to me. I know that was a big thing for him too. 
And um, yeah, I mean, obviously I think we would have liked it to go that way, but I think with the circumstances given, you know, we gave, we gave it the, the best crack that we could. <laughs> No, it was well, magic. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. I was just saying it was magic when you guys were in there. I mean, let's sort of break down the scene. I mean, you guys come face to face, nose to nose, Kurt headbutts you and, uh, man, there's a little bit of blood and the fans are going wild. What do you remember about that first in ring nose to nose segment, Joe? I remembered this is, I remember thinking, uh, after the head button, I hit the ground, I went, you know, the energy in the building and everything. And I, I went, this is awesome. You know? And then I remember going, he didn't listen to a damn word I said about that head. <laughs> <laughs> I know? almost knocked myself out, Joe. Yeah, yeah. And, and honestly, and listen, and, 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 the, and that's the funny part is that it wasn't so much like, you know, I, you know, I, I was, I was busted open, but I remember like, as he made contact and as he turned around and, and, you know, Kurt has this, you know, like, like most people, you get this adrenaline spike and the adrenaline spike can push you through a lot of stuff. But I remember once he made contact, like, you know, you, your eyes kind of briefly meet. And I just remember Kurt's eyes kind of went Ooh, like for, for, for just a kind of, kind of hit the reset button. And then, you know, the, the adrenaline kicked in, he turned around and he hit the, ah, and I remember on the ground and I, you know, and I, and I feel up and, and, and it's, it's unusual when you're, when you're bleeding from the head, because, you know, I, I think in your mind, if it's ever happened to you, you think you'll know, Oh, I'll, I'll feel the pain and, and I'll know I'm bleeding from the head, but you never know you're bleeding from the head. It's just, all of a sudden you just feel like you're sweating profusely for no good reason, you know? And I remember right when I hit, you know, and I'm a pretty sweaty guy, but I remember I hit, I was like, wow, man, I'm really sweating a lot. I'm a, adrenaline, adrenaline must really got to me. I'm all pumped up. And then, and then it, right where I go, I went, uh, and I went, oh, no, that's not sweat. You know? <laughs> so, you know, you come up and, uh, you know, you, you snap back in to, to where you need to be in the moment. And I remember I, you know, came up behind Kurt and, uh, you know, we got into it and it was a, yeah, it, it, it came off really well. It was, it was, it was one of those uh, awesome moments in my career that I always enjoy kind of looking back at because, you know, it was one of those magical times we were able to make something that I think a lot of people enjoyed. That was a money-making segment. It really mm -hmm. was. And that's why we did our highest pay-per-view sales in that yep. particular pay-per-view. Uh, but and, and like I said, I, and I think that's what's frustrating for me and Kurt is like, you know, that was probably a, a very small piece of what we could have put together given a little bit more time. From your perspective, how was working with Samoa Joe different from some of your other opponents? I mean, you had this legendary rivalry in the WWE with Shawn Michaels, totally different style performer with Samoa Joe. He's probably your biggest feud there. What was different about working with Joe from everyone else? Samoa Joe is one of the most physical wrestlers I've ever wrestled. He, he, he gets very physical. That, that, that's what I love about Joe. Uh, he reminds me of me. And the crazy thing is his athleticism is off the charts, you know, especially for a guy, his size, the stuff he can do is just unheard of. And uh, so Joe is a very talented wrestler and uh, I had a lot of fun working with him. Yeah. I mean, we were the benefit of that for sure. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe this is real, but we not only got a handicapper, but we got the best ever. How are you so good at handicapping these games? I mean, four and oh, that's quite a streak already. Well, uh, you know, let's talk about every pick I've given this year in the NFL, as an example. 23 and 8. Every pick I've given this year. Four weeks in the bag, 23 and 8. There's nobody in the country that can match what I do, but I always make sure, because anybody, Conrad, could make up anything. They could tell you and blow smoke and tell you, oh, I'm the greatest. But I am independently monitored and documented, so nobody could ever question what I say and go, I don't believe it. I send every pick to an independent monitoring and documentation service that has to get the pick before the game goes off and then publishes it after the game goes off so anybody can see what I gave. But this is the best start I've ever had. I've never been this good to start a season. You don't win every week, four weeks in a row, everything you put out. It's been the kind of year I've had. So get on a hot streak because when a guy's on a hot streak like me, you want to ride it. I've always had a talent for picking winners. Never quite as hot as I am right now, but I've always been very good at it. And, and I think it's because I do more homework than anybody else. You know, the average guy or gal watching this podcast, they, they don't have time. They have a career. They have jobs. They, they might read the newspaper or go online and see something, but they don't have time 80 hours a week to study the games. That's what I do. And I have a crew of guys behind me, my consultants who every week we get together three times a week and they throw their ideas at me. I throw my ideas at them 
And then I picked the final five plays on Saturday and Sunday in college and pro football. So, I mean, I've got a great team behind me too, but it's, we're all doing together hundreds of hours of homework. So you don't have to, it's all at VegasWinners.com. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to VegasWinners.com right now. Let's win some money. Well, answers, Joe, I need them. Did it hurt when I ended your undefeated streak? <laughs> uh, no, uh, it did not. Because for the most part at that point, it was kind of a lame duck uh, 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 undefeated streak where, you know, I'd lost a few by disqualification. So really it was more of a, you know, no, I've never been pinned. And uh, yeah, the, 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 the luster on that, on that trophy kind of wore off a, a, a few, uh, a few months before you had got there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, you're technically right. You did lose by DQ. So, yeah. uh, you know, the other. So it was like, you know, uh, really if, I, I kept up the charade, but I was just like, you know, I'm not undefeated, guys. <laughs> hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.